What's up guys? Today's video is all about underwater filming. Really mainly about how to set your camera up for underwater filming. You know on my channel I focus a lot on the cave diving aspect of things, but really what I'm going to show you here is applicable across the board, especially if you're just starting out and you kind of need to get over that learning curve of figuring out what do I need, why do I need it, and how do I use it. So. This video, I'm going to go over my stuff. I'm going to go over what I use to film my videos and kind of talk about the reasoning behind why I set up things the way I set them up. We'll just go on ahead and start getting into my rig. And as we go along, I'll talk about some of the do's, the don'ts, the accessories that I use, why I find them useful, that kind of thing. So here we go. Here's some of the things that I kind of tried early on that I found did not work. Cameras on your helmet. I've got a photo somewhere, I'll find it, I'll put it in this video. It was horrendous, but it was my first attempt at being able to film underwater. At this point, I had uh, been diving for a long time. I got my intro cave certification, and I was going to Mexico to go and get my full cave. And so I was super excited. I'd always heard that the caves in Mexico were beautiful, and I wanted to share that. I wanted to be able to capture some of that. And so I set up my helmet to film what I thought was going to be just amazing video. And some of it was, but you'll see from the photo that I'm going to put here, it was just, it was, it was a monster on your head. I had two uh, giant big blue video lights and one little GoPro on my helmet. Um, at this point, I had used a GoPro on my helmet before and it got the job done, but it didn't really do a great job. Uh, it was a lot of shaky footage. I didn't have video lights to begin with, so I had my single primary light, and you know, my dive buddies had their primary lights, but you just ended up seeing a bunch of little white circles floating around in blackness is what it looked like, basically, um, you know. So it wasn't really getting a good video quality out of what I was trying to get. So anyways, for this trip to Mexico, I set my helmet up. Because of the closeness, the proximity of the light to my lens, I caught so much backscatter. Even though the water was, I mean, gin clear, I was catching so much backscatter. A lot of the footage that I got just was almost unusable. You couldn't even appreciate what I was filming. So I, I ended up scrapping quite a bit of that footage. Um, and I learned from that uh, that Basically, you need to be able to create some space between the lens of your camera and your lights. I ended up actually purchasing a tray. Uh, I purchased a camera tray from Big Blue, and this is my current rig. And we'll kind of talk about how things evolved here because it didn't always look like this. Originally, it was just the tray, which is this little piece right here. And I had my two Big Blue lights, and I had the uh, ball clamps, one inch ball clamps that are seen here. And so this is how far my light sat away from my camera, which was much better than my helmet, but I still caught quite a bit of backscatter. So as I, uh, you know, kind of increased my arsenal, so to speak, I actually ended up purchasing some, uh, some skeletonized arms and you can see that's this arm here. So you can imagine this arm being right here and then the big blue lights kind of stick out. And so that, that created a little bit more distance. I got less backscatter and I was able to really kind of start getting better quality footage. And I liked it, but then I ran into the problem of, well, it's a little heavy. In order to correct that issue, I ordered these uh, arms and by the way, all of this stuff I'm going to link down in the description. So if you wanted to go and build your rig to look just like mine, you could do that. Just follow the links below and, and get your stuff. Um, so I can't quite remember the exact brand name. I bought them off of Amazon, but these are float arms. And uh, so basically it creates some positive buoyancy there to uh, negate the weight that I'm holding in my hand. And that helped quite a bit, but it was still a little bit too heavy, even with everything that I've got here. So I ended up getting these foam pieces. These are uh, marine grade floaty foams for, made specially for arms. I got that off of Amazon as well. 
and uh, that helped immensely. Now my rig is slightly negative, which is good for what I'm doing. I could probably put a little bit more uh, flotation on this rig and make it just perfect, but for what I do right now, it works great for me. At that point, my rig was pretty well set the way I like it. I could get a lot of, a lot of distance between my camera lens and where my light is, and it allowed me flexibility in that I can kind of collapse this thing down whenever I'm uh, not using it, and so I can collapse it. But then the problem I had was, well, where do I clip it? Any time that I tried to attach it to anywhere other than right here on my D-ring on my chest, if I tried to put this on my butt, it was gonna, you know, interfere with my finning technique and things uh, just kind of got in the way. So what I did was I ordered a camera lanyard. And what I can do with this is I can basically slip my arm through and hold it like a man purse, but it keeps it out of the way. It allows me to use my hands and it keeps it somewhere where it's easily accessible to me. That's why I like the lanyard personally. Yeah, so this is the basic frame for my rig. So I've got my float arms, I've got my extension arms, I've got two uh, one inch ball clamps on either side of the float arm. And then in addition, I have my lights, which are the Big Blue VLT 4200Ps. Uh, these things work great for me. I believe it's a 120 degree wide angle beam. They've got three light settings and also a primary focus beam. And I, I really enjoy using these. They're very robust. I've, you know, drug them through all kinds of stuff and uh, have not had a single issue out of them. So cameras, camera selection. I'm a GoPro guy. I love GoPros. I feel like they're really easy, very intuitive to use. Um, and they're compact, robust, and not to mention they come with these really nifty underwater cases. I've taken these up to recreational depths, 130 feet, and have had no issue with it whatsoever. You can purchase some aftermarket housings that are rated for even deeper depths and you can go as crazy as you want to with it. I started out filming with the GoPro Hero 3 and so as the cameras were getting better, I would of course upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. So primarily what I use now is a little bit of a mix between uh, several uh, variations of GoPro. So what I'm filming this on right now and my primary uh, diving camera that I have at the moment is my GoPro Hero 12. I also have the GoPro 7 Silver, the GoPro Hero 8 Black, and the GoPro 10 which I keep that on my DPV. That's kind of my dedicated DPV uh, camera. So those are the cameras that I use um, currently. And I'm sure as you know the camera technology improves and they keep coming out with better and better GoPros, I'm of course gonna upgrade with them. Uh, I have found GoPros to be the best kind of bang for your buck when it comes to it. If you're just starting out and you kind of want to see if you even enjoy doing it, I definitely suggest getting something like an action camera, which is of course what this video is focusing on. So let's talk a little bit about the do's and don'ts that I have found throughout my journey of building my current rig. Do's, make it streamlined. I know this looks like a clunking piece of metal here, but I can guarantee you this is a lot more streamlined than what I had when I first started and I just had a giant camera heavy lights all on my helmet and that really just threw off my my buoyancy my trim with this setup the way that i have it you know almost neutrally buoyant i'm much more comfortable i can stay trim flat and be able to propel myself forward while still maintaining a good picture quality where i can view the screen and see everything that i'm shooting you want to make it sturdy so make make your rig set up to where it's a solid rig you know you can see i've got scratches on my float arms uh, chipped paint pieces of you know metal that are kind of a little rough in places you want it to be a robust system because whether you're diving open water or in a cave at some point you're going to need to put your camera down or it's going to drop or something's going to happen and it needs to be able to take that 
abuse. Make it functional. Uh, you know, I've got this thing set up to where when I'm using it, it works great, it does what I want it to do, and when I'm not using it, I can very easily stow it away and everything folds up nicely, it's compact. I've got a nice carrying system for it, so then that way I can, you know, do what I need to do with my hands, whether that be line work or putting down cookies and markers or signaling my team. Whatever I need to do, I can very quickly and easily stow it away to keep my hands free. So make it something that's functional for you and your diving. Don't. Don't go all out and, you know, buy the greatest, latest stuff to build up this camera system that you're gonna try out as a beginner. Because I can tell you that just like in your diving career, things are gonna change, you're gonna learn what you like and what you don't like. And I'm not saying to buy the cheapest stuff you can, but definitely keep in mind that you're going to evolve as you figure out, you know, the kind of, the kind of filming that you like to do, uh, where you like to do it, what works best, what doesn't. So, I mean, you know, start where you are with what you have and, you know, make it into something that, uh, that if you're just starting out, definitely take it one step at a time. Like I said, I built my system that I currently have one piece at a time. I, uh, you know, started out with just a camera, then I added video lights, and then I added the tray, and then I added the float arms, and then I added, you know, it, it just adds on as you figure out what works and what doesn't. And then you end up with something that you, that you like that you can use for a long time. And uh, you can kind of build off of that as well. So uh, yeah, don't go out all out on bells and whistles and buying the latest and greatest. You know, start small and build on that. Again, going back to the backscatter issue that I had with my helmet, don't put your lights too close to your camera. You will get backscatter and that applies all across the board, whether you're ocean diving, quarry diving, cave diving, river diving, it doesn't matter. If you put your lights too close to your camera lens, it's you're gonna catch a lot of the backscatter off of that and it's gonna ruin your video quality. Uh, it's not gonna look as cool as you'd like it to look. So definitely don't make that mistake. If there is one thing that I would suggest investing in early, it would be definitely getting some sort of a tray and arm system that you can separate your lights from your camera, get some distance between the lights and your lens. And lastly, don't put your camera on your helmet, if you can help it. Um, you know, there's situations where I still put my camera on my helmet. For instance, when I'm using my DPV, I usually keep my camera on my helmet, and that is so that in that way I can kind of have a first person view of driving the DPV through the cave, and it, and it looks cool when you add it in with the other better shot footage. Um, you know, it's definitely not my go-to. Uh, there's a time and a place for it, but if you're gonna be using that as your primary camera, definitely don't put it on your helmet. You're gonna end up with shaky video, and even with correction and post-edit and, you know, lenses and everything, it, it's gonna end up shaky, and, and you're not gonna like the quality that you get from that. But lastly, guys, I wanna talk about a few of the accessory items that I like to use whenever I'm doing my underwater filming. An extra camera and a small tripod. So this is actually a tripod from GoPro for GoPros. And it's small, it's super compact, there's nothing to it, it doesn't weigh much, but you can fold it out. It extends to some, uh, I believe they call this one the shorty. But either way, I find it useful because I'm able to kind of place it on a rock, set up my shot, and then do something, you know, cool, <laughs> whatever that may be. And, uh, you know, I find it useful to have a second camera in general because just like in everything else with cave diving or technical diving, you, you like to have redundant systems, whatever may happen. I have a backup camera that I can also, you know, put onto my tray and use as my primary to finish filming what I want to film. And in addition to the fact that I have a uh, 
b-roll footage camera that I'm able to place and be able to do things in front of it to uh, kind of create different angles and uh, different perspectives. So definitely something like that. Another good one is a tripod similar to this because sometimes having a perfectly rigid tripod like this doesn't really do the job because if you've got it sitting on a rock or something, you can't really place it the way you want it to. However, having in a more of an uh, accordion or ball type tripod, I'm able to set this thing up however I need to to get it to fit where I want it to fit. And this thing is super, super lightweight and accessible. Put it in a pocket and I can basically keep it out of the way until I want it to be there. Uh, another thing that I want to talk about is of course the importance of the lighting and we've already gone over my primary lights that I keep on camera, that I keep on my rig, but I also keep with me uh, Orca Torch D710V, which I also put a product review out for that, so check that video out. I'll leave that link in the description as well. But this little guy here is pretty cool for uh, setting up some off-camera lighting. So if you wanted to maybe light up a cool feature or, you know, kind of create more depth into your video, that's great too. Uh, sometimes I can hand this off to the diver in front of me and they can kind of have a, another video light to create, again, more depth rather than it just being my lights on that diver. That diver can be holding a video light pointing in front of him or to the wall to the side. That translates to better quality film and that translates to better looking content. You want your videos to look good. You want other people to look at them and go, wow, that looks amazing. And uh, you know, definitely lighting is key. You wanna be able to uh, have some off-camera lighting. You wanna be able to have a way to you know, set up a second camera if your budget allows for that. And uh, also the second camera gives you some redundancy and just in case your primary craps the bed on you. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you click like, subscribe, and share. If you did like the video and you wanna see more like it or you want more information, please leave a comment in the comment section below and enjoy the links to the products. Like I said, everything that you see here, I'm gonna leave a link in the description for it. So if you wanna build your rig just like mine, then please feel free and let me know how that goes. Again, thanks for tuning in and remember, stay curious and never stop exploring.